What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the podcast. My name is Robbie Cassidy, and on this episode of the podcast, we are going to follow up to last week's, and we're going to look at structure a little bit more. So last week, we were looking at how to stay injury-free as you train throughout the year, and this is more for around the maturing athlete, the one who has other life priorities going on at the same time as well um, and just want to get it all in and want to make sure that they fit everything in so they're making the best of it so what i'm going to talk about in this one is structure and how we can structure it a little bit better and what i'm going to give you is because it's individual to everyone i'm going to have to give you more questions that you can ask yourself uh, and then you can we can kind of tease out what's the best option for you then um, and that way you can it's, it's going to be individual everyone can make it that bit more individual so when we look at it training and routine can sometimes it, it can be more of a stressor than it should be take for example a person who has a family or significant other but still loves to train and in cases is lo- loves to compete as well now whether that be against themselves or competing with a team in this scenario we often feel lost when it comes to prioritizing. We want to do best in our sport, but also want to make sure that you're there for the other people in your life. Uh, So you might end up hitting the gym a little bit inconsistently, not knowing what to do or when we're in there. And that just leads you down the path of doing the same exercises, the ones, and we're all guilty of this, just doing the exercises that you enjoy doing. Now, over time, with the inconsistency, you're gonna start picking up a little, a few more injuries. And a few more issues issues then in your sport. And it's going to leave you sidelined multiple times throughout the season. And the people that I talk to about this, this is the issue that they say is that they can't really build that consistency into their training because there's always an issue or an always an injury kicking up and it's holding them back. Okay. Now, after you start to heal and you get back into your training, you often realize that you have returned and you're off the pace because you've been out for so long and there hasn't really been a connection and this is a big issue as well is when you stop training and everyone else stays training you're trying to catch up to their pace or if you have set a certain running time and you have stopped training and you're trying to get back to it people will often will try to push themselves too hard and pick up something another little injury along the way as well so we need to avoid that rushing back because what will happen is you're just going to get injured again and this is a rinse and repeat just it happens consistently Uh, And as I said, then it's very hard to get a nice season down of training. Now, you never really get to enjoy your training or your season as it feels like you're falling off the pace and slowly you start to lose confidence. And you might start to think, is it worth it at all? These are all common things. These are things that people that I talk to, people that I work with, they're all issues that they were running into along the way. Uh, And the confidence one is one that kind of chips away a little bit more. It's not one that's top of mind but it chips away in the background where you're questioning yourself. Are you able to do it anymore? Is it possible? Is it worth it? Uh, and you, you, you really start looking at your training. And what happens to a lot of people is they pull back from doing things they love because they just feel like it's the effort that goes into it and the payback where they're constantly injured is not worth it. Now, the thing is, at the base of this, is you need to understand how you're going to structure your training. Okay, Not understanding the signs that your body gives you before an injury is going to set you back more. So you need to start realizing that there are other things you can do to improve it. And it's possible to overcome it. It is, I see it all the time. You just need a little bit more knowledge and a bit more of a plan and a little bit more structure. Okay, so let's dive into it. We'll look at the problem identification first. What are the main issues that people are running into? Well, first off, it's lack of consistency in workouts. This is a huge one where you're chopping and changing, you're doing different gym sessions, you're doing them too much or you're doing them too little or you're just doing the same four exercises over and over again. Whether that be a bench, a low row, bicep curls, maybe a leg press, but both of these scenarios play a role. When you're doing it on and off, and you continue to build up strength in certain areas, even though you feel like you're getting a gym session in, you're often neglecting other areas that you need to take care of. And the other thing is that when you start to do rehab, this becomes a bigger problem because you do a little bit of rehab for a short time and then you fall back into the habit of just doing the exercises that you enjoy. And the thing is, when you don't have a structured plan, what happens is you go into the gym with an idea of I'm going to work out this today and then gym gets a little busy or people are on the machine that you want to go on so you just fall back into old habits we're all guilty of it it happens to everybody it it's not a problem but if it can be a hindrance 
it definitely can be a hindrance. So we need to just look at that in a bit more detail. The other thing is doing things on and off and missing important sessions. So you might have a, a full body split, you might have a push pull leg split, whatever your split is that you're doing, is it, are you doing it consistently? Like I often hear people say, geez, I miss legs again this month or I miss legs again this year. And it is common that we completely neglect it because it's a challenging point at the start. But once you start to get into it, once you get better at it, it becomes a lot more enjoyable. Now, it is important to have consistent progression in your training. You want to know that, okay, I'm training for now and I'm building, 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 and you're increasing your weights and you're keeping an eye on it. And then you have your recovery periods. So it's consistency in training and consistency in recovery. And then a good plan to what you're working on each week. Now, the second one is the uncertainty about your program progression. And what this looks at, and I see this all the time with with guys and and girls who are, are training and they don't know what to how to progress their exercises or they don't know what to couple their exercises with so they never add plyos they never increase their weight they never look at their sets and reps and plan those differently throughout the year depending on different things like if you have a match coming up and you're hitting a hypertrophy session which is a really really which is whatever high sets high reps right before that match you're fatiguing the muscles and you're not going to get too much for it so you're at a higher risk of injury because of that okay so you need to be making sure that you're chopping and changing and moving that around or if you have a competition coming up and you're doing the wrong type of training you might be setting yourself up to a little bit more of a risk of injury and that's what we need to be careful with because you want the gym to add to your program and to improve everything else and to use it as a way to clear your head and all the other benefits that come with it but you want to make sure that you're getting the best out of it as well. So how do you know then in the gym when you're plateauing? How do you know that, okay, I've done this exercise for a while. Uh, I need to change it up by either, by either changing the type of way I do this exercise or adding more reps or changing the amount of sets to it. And then you need to look at how do I transition from one block to the next? Like with your programs, are they six-week programs? Are they eight-week programs? Are they 12-week programs? Are they longer six month style program where you have your breaks in between? Like what do your training blocks look like? How long is your deload? These are all things that will come into it and I'm going to be mentioning them along the way. But as I said, I'm going to highlight them and I want you then to start thinking about them in more detail and start bring this to your own training as well. So how does one block transition to the next block? Is there a little bit of a build up and then you pull back and you get into the next one or does one block just go straight into the next? You don't really know when one finishes and one starts. Uh, and it just goes off of how you're feeling these are things that we need to we need to start getting a little bit more structure in and that's why it's important to start to think about them in a little bit more detail so we can get that structure into it then the other thing is no real clear training goal or no periodization and this is where i was looking at this is more specifically looking at the blocks of training where you're doing a six week or you're doing an eight week block you don't have deloads you are just pushing the whole year until something breaks down and that's your deload or until you go on holiday or until you go to a wedding and that's your deload. Having a yearly goal and a goal for each block is a great way of overcoming this. Okay, so you know, like, and the goal doesn't have to be so specific for the year and I'll talk about this in the second section, but having something that you know, okay, well, this is kind of what I want to do as opposed to just blindly going through your training sessions and not really seeing results and not really seeing progression. So understanding why you're doing it. Why am I doing this training session? Why am I lifting heavier today? Why do I need to push for the next four weeks and then pull back and then change my session so it becomes a little more normal? How do I build up to a race? How do I build up to a high rocks? How do I build up to a GAA season or a championship? How do I build up to jiu-jitsu tournaments? All of these things need to be considered and they need to be planned in your training goals and in your periodization okay and then the other thing is accountability a lot of people just not they don't stay consistent to their plan because they don't have anyone to be accountable to and they're stopping and starting and they don't really realize that they have this inconsistency until someone else highlights it this is a, an interesting one where you can uh, get in a training diary is an, is an effective way of overcoming this or getting a coach where you have someone to say well how many sessions did you get last week how did you performing those sessions what was the effort level like do we need to change anything do we need to improve anything 
And having someone to be accountable to is a great way of just building that and building that structure out a little bit more and then building the consistency is, is what it is. So they're some of the main ones. Now we'll look at, we'll start to look at some of the solutions to the problems that you're dealing with. And obviously one of the, the biggest solution is structure. Structure training can be a huge help here. It gets rid of the confusion. You know why you're doing each session. You can see how each element seamlessly integrates into the next one. You know you can push a little bit more at certain stages because there's a deload coming up. You've designated rest periods so you can stop when you need to and you can pull back and you can recover so that you can push on more the next time or you have certain days that you take off completely just to recover. And you can manage injuries and issues as they crop up. Okay, so this, these are some of the solutions. Now, you need to see where they fit into your training plan overall. Uh, and you want to avoid stopping completely. Because as I said, if you're picking up an injury and you're stopping completely every time that injury happens, you're off the pace and then you're trying to get back into it. You're trying to catch up to the pace again. And that might just be your own pace and your own goals, what you set out for yourself during the year. And sometimes you need to get, sometimes when you get an injury, yes, you do need to stop and pull back. But there's always something that you can do to improve it. That That is key to know. There's always something that you can do to keep your training moving forward even when you have an injury so first off what we need to do set clear training goals and periodization know what your goal is know what you're working towards it doesn't have to be the most specific thing where it's run a 5k in under 20 minutes it can be more of a compass i want to play in every championship game this year i want to one i want to run three half marathons during the summer i want to do a high rocks event i want to be able to play seven aside with my friends I want to do a 10K with my wife or I want to do a 10K with my husband or there's a group of us that are going to do a tough mother. I want to be able to do all these things and not have to worry about injuries or issues in the background. So setting clear goals and then setting out, well, I know the tough mother's on in May. I know the 10K is on in July and I know I'm going on holidays to Lanzarote and we're doing another one out there a little bit of a change in adaption there because of the heat obviously then you set to plan your training blocks around that and you do them 6 to 8 to 10 weeks out to 12 weeks out whatever you need to do and whatever how ever in advance obviously the more advanced you are the better the more prepared you can be but just understand that it has to become part of it now the thing is once you've set your goals you've set your periodization you know when you're going to deload then you have to deload, okay? And incorporating deload periods for recovery is so important when you're looking at your training on a year. Set a specific time where you're gonna deload. Record how your symptoms are around this time. I recently, I was working with a lady, um, or work, I am working with the lady, who it was on the Wednesday before the deload week, she noticed that all her weights dropped off in the gym. She couldn't really lift them. She was becoming, well, she could lift them, but she was way more fatigued. Um, her patience was dropping, uh, her motivation was dropping and everything was, was starting to kind of go off whack. And she didn't really understand why. But on the next call, I was able to lay it out. Look, we had planned this in advance. The deload was coming up and we knew that you were gonna push because she had certain goals we knew that you were going to push for this time period and we knew it was going to take a little bit out of you. Uh, and we were chatting over and back and really, really good conversation got, went into a lot of detail on a really, really good learning experience for her because then we said, all right, next time we need to change it so that you can get to the Friday before that happens. Not the Wednesday, the Friday of that week so you can get an extra session, extra two sessions in and then pull back and deload. And we were able to hash that out and go into a bit more detail on it. It was really, really, really eye-opening experience for her because then she was able to make decisions in future. Okay, well, I know that it's a deload coming up, so I can push myself a little bit more here. I'm not going to be at risk of injury because I can manage it next week. So record your symptoms are around the time. That's really important. Now, the next thing is that you can make a decision based off of the evidence, especially if you're working with someone, this helps a lot more because you can feel if you extend. I'll often say to a client, We've pushed well over the last six weeks. I know you missed a couple of sessions in the middle. There was a little bit of an inconsistency there and I feel that you're performing well enough. What do you think about adding another week or another two weeks? In this lady's case that she was talking about, there's no way I would have said that because all of the signs pointed towards a deload. In another case, it, it often happens that 
they're feeling good they're feeling strong and with the way the periodization is laid out you can say let's add another week or let's add another two weeks um, to really get the most out of it because then you get more adaption when you pull back on that deload and how does it fit into the overall plan during your deload then just make sure that you're doing something so you're either doing a bit of mobility you're doing your rehab you're trying something new is what I always tell people like jump into a new class or do something that you haven't done before just to change the perspective off the training a little bit so that when you get back into training you're able to really focus again so those deload weeks are often experimental times where you can try out different things that you enjoy or you might work on skill specific stuff it doesn't mean that you just drop everything and don't go to the gym and don't do anything at all it means that you're just changing your perspective while you're giving the body an extra couple of days to recover okay now the next one is a huge thing that I do with clients and this is such a big part of it is that as we go through the programs is understanding the session components and understanding the load management aspect of that okay are we doing plyos plyometrics jumps hops how is this going to impact your body like what should you expect how are things going to be a little bit different and why are you doing them and when you ask them these questions and we talk through it and we can we get good defined answers around them you understand that you're doing a few more plyos, so you need to expect things to get a little bit more tight and sore on some of these days. We need to be careful that if they change training around, that we manage it better so that you're not doing a big plyo session right before training and you're doubling down on the work that you're doing because there's benefits to that sometimes and sometimes then it's important to pull back. Why are you pushing heavier weights? How do you do that so you can do it safely and that you can get the benefit of pushing the heavier weights how do you know what your weight is? How do you know when you're pushing enough? What's the goal? Is it going to impact your training outside? Big thing that people don't realize is as you start to push heavier weights, even though your reps drop, the nervous system takes a big hit. So you can become a lot more fatigued in, in, in your nervous system and you don't even realize it. Okay, so it's going to impact your training outside of that. It's going to impact your mood a little bit as well because of the fatigue that comes alongside of it. Everyone has a little bit, they're, 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 symptoms of fatigue are different for everybody um, and it's important to understand those it's a big part of, of 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 what we do as well trying to understand that and then the other thing is that trying to integrate your rehab exercises seamless, seamlessly into the plan rehab can be boring no question about it when you're just told to go over and do some boring rehab you do it for one week and then you stop doing it because it's like i just didn't want to do that anyway i didn't really see the benefit of it it was too low level so it's, it's about trying to make sure that the rehab, that okay, well, you're doing RDLs already in the program, so you're hitting it. So can we change the angle on the RDL to work on it, the hamstring a little bit more? I know that your hip is acting up, so let's look at putting an isometric hold into the lunge. Okay, let's look at raising the lunge in the front so we can work on the, the isometric or we can work on some form of strength or we can increase the eccentric time of it. So there's more things you can do around that when you understand why you're doing your rehab and you're not just going in there and doing it for the sake of doing it. And what happens, as I said, with the rehab is we do it so inconsistently that we need to be more aware. We don't really let it, how do you say? Sometimes people just don't do enough rehab and the pain goes away because they haven't done or because they've waited long enough and they just get back at it and then they pick up the same injury in time to come so it's important that you're integrating it into your sessions and how can you adapt each exercise and each session to hit an area a little bit differently is is another nice little one to 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 make the best of it because as i said with rehab when it's boring if you can just change an exercise slightly so that it hits the right area and you can build that strength there perfect that a lot of times that is enough to get the stimulus that you need you don't need to do a full 15, 20 minute rehab session outside of it. You can just do it within your training. The other thing is you need to look back at the other injuries you've had, make sure that you're addressing them in your training. Okay, so there's more to it than just making the sessions and saying go away and work on it. You need They need to be integrating rehab. You need to make sure that you're hitting all the right things. And they can't just be two hour long sessions. They have to be in a good time. That's where that's why the whole thing comes together where you're looking at six to eight weeks. We have a little bit block at start here that we can do focus on rehab a small bit more. And then we can focus on prehab after that. And then we can focus on performance after that. So you want to create these adaptable structures that accommodate the lifestyle that you're living and the changes within it. You want to understand going into a session, how can I adapt this session so that I'm able to get to a wedding at the weekend 
and I'm not going to be completely gassed and that I can still get the adaption, adaption because I know on Monday I'm going to be out as well and we're going to be out with the wedding party. Or maybe it's training has changed this week. It's changed last minute due to weather. How can I adapt my gym session? As I said earlier on, if you didn't know that you needed to do that, you would do a heavy session of plyos the night before training and then you're at a higher risk of injury or issue or pain because of that. So it's a, a huge part is about understanding understanding why you're doing it, how you can create things that are more adaptable, how your lifestyle is going to play a role in your training. Or another one, such a common one, I have only 40 minutes a day because I have to pick up my child. What are key parts of the session that I need to get in? What's the most important parts of the session? Or I'm traveling at the end of this week. What are the most important sessions that I need to do? And how can I adapt them to get the most out of them? Like there's so many little intricacies that we need to work on and fix. But when you have a good general understanding of everything, you can start to make those little adaptions as you go through it. Okay, that's mostly everything. Now I'm going to leave you with a couple of questions that I want you to think about as well, because you need to start reflecting on your own challenges and your own goals. So first off for you, how are you going to adjust and adapt your training routine for special events, golf trips, stag parties, weddings, or just a trip away or a holiday? Like you're planning a holiday, how do you balance it so that you can plan it well enough that the build up is perfect and then when you go away you can use it as like a mini deload how do you determine when to push a session harder or when to modify the program what's a good pain that you can lean into more in a session versus a bad pain where you need to pull back and then as you start to go through the program do you front load your week do you back load your week because of the training that you do front loads obviously more sessions at the, at the start back load is at the end and why are you doing that? And what strategies have you used to prioritize training during busy periods? A lot of questions, a lot of things to be answered, but it is really, it's so individual that I wanted to open up all the different avenues for you to think about so that you can start to plan your sessions a little bit more. You can structure them so that they work for you. Now, if you are wondering where you're going wrong, I have a free scorecard, which is worth checking out. It's in the description of this podcast. And when you go through the scorecard, you fill it all out. It'll give you a an understanding, a better understanding of your pain history, your recovery methods, your psychological readiness, and your injury uh, history as well. And what it's going to do is when you go through it, it'll give you answers back what you need to work on uh, and where you're missing out on. Uh, and at least then you have a better idea of okay, well, I need to, my recovery methods are perfect. So I need to lean into rehabbing old injuries a little bit more because there's questions around it about how long were you out? Uh, have you been, has the same injury come back multiple times? There's different questions focused on different areas. And when you do the whole thing, they add in together. It took me a while to put it together, but uh, it's been, the people who've done it so far have got a lot from it. So definitely check that out and then you will know exactly what you need to work on. And then afterwards, if you want to, we can set up a call once I have that scorecard and we can chat through, is there any way I can help you? I am taking on more clients at the moment. There is a wait list for it, but everyone that's coming into it is coming through that scorecard. So definitely fill that out and let me know. Send me a message on Instagram at Robbie Cassidy underscore or at info at the mobility tutor.com uh, if you have any questions on anything at all. But that's all for me today. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, I would love if you enjoyed this podcast to please go up to the top of Spotify uh, and if you could rate it or iTunes uh, and I want to get it up to a thousand five star ratings if that's possible at all. I am way off, so uh, I still have a lot to go. But if you could help me out on that, that would be huge because it'll allow me to get bigger guests on in time uh, and I'll be able to have conversations that will benefit you from that. So I would really, really appreciate if you could do it thank you so much otherwise thank you for listening again i appreciate it as always and if you need anything reach out that's all for me and i will chat to you at the same time next week have a good one